Hey y'all, it's your girl Stephanie. This is Wrestling Color Podcast right here on YouTube. Make sure you go ahead and follow me on Instagram, Twitter. Um, follow me on Pinterest, on wherever that you want to follow me and keep up with me because Instagram has deactivated a lot of their recent uh, hashtags. So when I post, a lot of times it just seems like it's getting lost in the sauce or whatever. Um, hope you are getting into the last three posts, the Sacrificial Lion, Just the Simple Answer, and Who This Heifer Talking To. Those are the latest three posts here on Wrestling in Color. I enjoy talking to you guys, and for those that listen to it, thank you. Still on my road to 300. It's, um, it's moving. It's moving and grooving. So, I bet you want to know why I'm here. Yeah, I'm here. I had time today because I had time today because I, I wasted time watching Survivor Series. And this ain't about Survivor Series per se, but I'm going to touch on a couple things that pissed me off, you know. And you know what? It didn't really piss me off as much as it just confuses me and makes me feel stupid when I watch these shows. Lana in the Women's Battle Royale is the sole survivor, okay? Cool. But the problem I'm having is, prior, uh, building up to this whole uh, shit that WWE is doing, they painted Lana more as, I'm fighting to show you all that I belong here. And essentially, she didn't do anything. She don't stick up for herself. She get beaten, batted. She don't, st you know, you know, it's a saying. And I'm probably saying it's wrong. But the saying is, fall down 10, get up 10. Some shit like that, right? If you fall down, you get up and you fight harder than the first time. The story of Rocky resonates with so many people, especially like, you know, short white men. It's because Rocky... Rocky, in the beginning of all his movies, is, is broke. He a broke, beat-down man, right? He meets someone who tells him, Rocky, you gonna do this, okay? Then he trains, gets his ass beat initially, falls down, trains again, then he beat the man. Then he beat whoever he got to beat. Now, Rocky Three, my favorite Rocky Three of all time. Uh, listen, my favorite Rocky is Rocky Three. That's what I meant to say. Rocky One, you introduced him. Rocky Two, he got his. He, you know, him Apollo Creed. Apollo Creed, you know, going at it. He beat Apollo. Rocky Three is so pivotal to me because it literally encompasses everything Americana and more. Let me tell you. Let me tell you why this is lining up with whatever WWE is trying to do with Lana. And I'm going to tell you why it's backfiring right now. And why it works for Rocky. And whoever's trying to model their life after Rocky Balboa. Listen. Boom. Rocky 2. You know, he, he feeling himself. He beat Apollo Crew, You know, Apollo uh, Creed or whatever. I keep trying to say Apollo Crews. He beat Apollo Creed. You know what I mean? Whoop, whoop. They friends. Whatever. Club of Lane come on the scene. Rocky feeling himself, you know, he, he boxing and, and bullshitting and playing games. And, you know, Mickey is like, come on, Rock, and some bullshit. He getting a bunch of chumps in the ring, you know. He, 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 just, he, just, he just floating through life, you know what I mean? And everybody's like, yeah, well, Rocky, whatever. Club of Lane come on the scene like, yeah, motherfucker, I'm here to set the shit off on you. Because you out here floating like you can't get your ass beat. Club of Lane took it so far where he told Adrian, listen... He can't fight. Let me fuck you. That put that's what pissed Rocky off, right? Boom. He got to train. Boom. Me and Mickey training him. Rocky want to play games and he training with bubbles and shit and Mickey's like, "You don't understand. You know Mickey's not trying to give it to Rock the way he finna give it to him, right?" So Rocky bullshit and Mickey finally was like, "Yo, you a chump, okay? All the fights you been having is chump shit." This man finna wax your clock, clean your clock, right? He finna eat you alive, dog walk your ass, and give you a whole two-piece meal and a biscuit. With french fries, and you sitting here fucking playing around. He was like, come on, Mickey, man. He was like, you know, I'm tired of this bullshit. I'm mad old. I don't know what you, what you finna do. Like, I don't even want to train with you no more. You corny as fuck. Boom. Rocky was like, whatever. 
Time to fight. Club Elaine out here fucking doing chin-ups in a meat locker. Punching walls. Growling and shit. Time to fight. Club Elaine ate Rocky ass up. Beat the fuck out of Rocky. Rocky all fucked up. Mickey done had a heart attack. Died. All the shit's falling apart. Okay? Here's the kicker. Rocky didn't know how Clubber Lane was living. Because Clubber Lane from the hard streets of Philly. He over there with the black folks. He in the ghetto. You know, he living that he living that lifestyle that he was forced into to fight his way out. You know, that whole gritty black in America story. And here's Rocky Balboa. Came from Philly too, but you know, he done came up. You know, whoop de whoop de whoop. In order for Rocky to beat Clubber Lane, he had to call Apollo to go run fucking interference and reconnaissance, come back to him, he had to take Rocky to the ghetto so he could train like a black fighter in order to beat a black fighter, okay? That's the whole, that's what be blowing my motherfucking mind about Rocky, all right? I be like, yo, this man had to train with the black people in order to order understand how to fight a black person. He had to do, he had to get it. Boom, boom, boom. He, he still was falling. He still couldn't figure it out. He fucking going through the motions. Adrian's like, man, you know, all this shit's going on. Okay? This is the second fight, man. You got to come in there and do this. Like, what is you doing? These people's teasing you. They calling you a chump. You whack. You don't know what you're doing. Like, I'm tired of this. I'm working with you. Apollo was like, come on, motherfucker. Like, come on. Wake the fuck up. The only way you knew Rocky woke up is when he finally beat Apollo in a race on the beach. When he finally beat that dude, you know Rocky was ready for whatever Clubber was finna bring, right? Real simple. Rocky beat Clubber Lane. I think that was even a bigger feat than the Russian. Because Rocky had to literally go learn how to fight a black man to beat the black man. You can't beat no storyline like that. Boom. I bet you're like, what the fuck that got to do with Lana? Lana. Lana got a Chronicles, right? Right? Lana Chronicles. Ain't but 30 minutes. I think 15, to be honest. It's Lana. Talking about how she want to bring fashion into the WWE. That's cute. Talking about how Natty is her inspiration and helped her and trained her. That's cute. You know, that's why she wear the pink and black. Because, you know, they was paired up for a minute for real bizarre reasons. But the crux of Lana's uh, chronicle is motherfuckers don't like her and they tease her and they make her cry and they make her feel like shit. Do you know why? Because something about Lana is inauthentic. Something about Lana is bizarre. It's something about her that people just can't. I don't know, maybe it's because she was with Rusev all that time, and she was, you know, the, the ravishing Russian, and, you know, Russians are, you know, I crush you, and that just straight up, I don't know fuck, I'm about to come through, fuck up the shit, keep it going, I don't know, but now y'all want to soften Lana up, y'all want her to be a face, and you trying to put her over, but you putting her over in a fucked up fashion, you putting her over like Rocky Five. you know what I mean, like the kid who who came up to Rocky and want to have a street fight, and, and you know what I mean? Like, you ain't putting her over right. You're not giving her the underdog story like John Cena says, or, you know, um, Kofi Kingston. Lana literally could run the Kofi Kingston story, and it would fit. Y'all got her out here looking crazy as fuck. So Lana's on the fucking Chronicles crying, People telling her to kill herself, get the fuck out of here. Why you still here? Get fired. You in the way. You ain't doing nothing. Lana, her, she was harping on her being a part of the, um, uh, what was it? Uh, a battle royale at Survivors at, at, um, at WrestleMania. She was a part of that group. Now that group had the Bella Twins, Naomi, uh, all the, uh, what's her name, Charlotte, all the hot girls, and then she over in the corner, you, if you saw the picture, you probably wouldn't even know if Lana was a fuck, Lana was a part of that shit, she wants to be a part of something, she don't want to be the first, that's what she said, I don't have to be the first, I just want to be a part, I hope people remember me, motherfuckers don't want to remember the person that's crying all the fucking time, now, here we go, we got this, now I'm thinking, okay, so this is the, this is, this is the Chronicles, in the Chronicles, she was like, she about to show people, she about to break it down, ain't nobody finna make her feel any kind of way, 
here we go, Survivor Series. You the sole survivor. Mind you, for nine episodes of Raw, you going through tables, you getting fucked up, people kicking you in the face. All this shit's going on. Now it's your time to show and prove. So we go through this fucking Survivor Series, right? These ladies are, are, are working it out. They're doing what they're supposed to do. Now there's a couple spots that I enjoyed a lot. When um, Natty ch- uh, checked um, Peyton Royce. Peyton missed a, uh, me- Peyton missed a fucking, some type of, uh, she was going to do that where she stretched you from the back with your hands. Peyton missed it. Tell me why Natty stumped her chest. I said, Natty just checked the fuck out of her right there on TV. Good. She stumped the fuck out of her titties. You could tell Natty was like, give me a fucking break. So then she put in the crab and, you know, she put in the sharpshooter. Then you had fucking Ruby Riot get kicked in the mouth. She took it like a trooper. You know. So Lana comes in there. She tried to do some type of leg drop split situation. Don't know. They told Lana, don't you tag in, you keep your fucking ass on these steps, and don't, Lana stood there and cried. I'm sitting here to myself, I just watched this chronicle. Why the fuck is Lana like, no, you're not going to talk to me like that. I'm about to get in here and show what I can do. No, this bitch stood on them steps like a big dumb baby and cried. Lips swollen and everything. That's her character? That's the baby face you push in? This is a grown fucking ass married woman. And that, is she that fucking weak? Are you serious? I'm supposed to be like, oh, Lana, oh. Boom. Bianca Belair is showing her ass. If anything, Bianca came out like a, a beast. You know what I mean? She didn't let Nia Jax put it through a table. Nia didn't sell shit. She got put through some fucking, um, them steps and got right the fuck back up. But then she got flipped over, you know, flipped over the situation but the guy counted them out. Lana comes in, and this bitch is having a full-on celebration like she put in the work. I'm sitting here like, okay, you want me to cheer on someone who did not do nothing for 15 minutes? Didn't even attempt? I thought she was going to fuck over Nia or fucking um old girl. The queen of spades. I forgot her fucking name. No, this bitch really stood there and just, you know, she's sobbing and shit. That's not going to get your girl over. Sorry. No. No, 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 no. No, Lana. And then the last thing. I don't understand what WWE has against these young stars. But why the fuck is The Miz winning the Survivor, the the, the Soul Survivor, the, the, whatever the fuck that was, the pre-show? Why did he win? I want someone to tell me. He's already the Money in the Bank winner. Which he's not gonna he's not gonna cash in successfully. Ain't no way you gonna have Miz beat Roman or Drew McIntyre. Ain't no fucking way. I I mean I'll be floored if that happens. Okay. Why didn't you let Dominique win that match and let and let us why why did it have to happen? What the fuck? And last but not least, I enjoy um, the Messiah sacrificing himself so he can go ahead and be with his wife. He said, I got the devil. Kick me. Got them got kicked dead in the damn face and rolled out the ring. And um, what's his name? Oh my god. Kevin Owens was like, Are you fucking serious? Just get out of here. And he and they show him just rolling out the ring. That shit was funny. Listen, Survivor Series was not good at all. I didn't enjoy it at all. I went to sleep a couple times. It wasn't good. It wasn't Sasha's Banks match and um, uh, Oscar match. Of course, it, Sasha Banks always gonna bring the the. She always gonna bring a good match. That was gonna be a good match. Uh, the New Day and the Street Profits. Yeah, whatever. You know, it literally was nothing fighting. No one was fighting for anything. <coughs> but Lana is the focus of this podcast today because I don't understand. What I'm supposed to do with Lana. When Lana's online, you know, she she has these videos where she's really condescending. Let me let you listen to one. And this is this is why people pick at her. Listen to this. All right, well, she must have took it down. I can't find it. But it's a video of her um, talking to the camera. She's just like, you know, 
oh, it's a bunch of, oh, she's talking about journalists, and she's talking about it's a bunch of them just in the basement, and they fat, and they, they tired and hungry, and they just writing stuff about her and don't know nothing about her, and whoop de whoop de whoop and it comes off really like, you know how, oh my, I don't know how to describe it. It's like, the girl, okay, you, you, you messing with this girl, she defends herself, you get in trouble, and then she starts picking at you. That's basically what, as, as silly as that sounds. Like, I get, somebody tell me I'm ugly on the internet, I'm just like, okay girl, like, I'm fucking about to be 40 years old. Like, seriously, Lana's like 37, 35 years old, something like that. She in her 30s. I don't know why the fuck she's still letting people work her over. Now, I totally get what she said when she was like, you know, she was with Rusev all the time. She didn't say his name. But she was with, with him 24 hours. Now she's not. She was talking to the fans and had some type of control over how the crowd reacted with her. Now she's not. So all she has is Instagram, TikTok. And and it's, when she gets on there, everyone wants to tell her to go kill herself. And she can't take it. Now she said that's fucking up her mental health. Well, sweetie, log off. Now her parents seem cool as fuck. Her dad is a minister. And he's like, you know, you my baby and we gonna pray. But I, I just don't, it's something about Lana that's just not going to click with, the, with with regular people. It just ain't. Well, her image is not going with with what she's trying to give. You're trying to give the underdog. You look absolutely like you're in a whole nother lifestyle, but you're whining and crying, and it doesn't connect. No one gives a fuck about rich people crying, and that is what you're looking like. So I don't know what WWE is doing here, but that... Survivors um series win. I I don't I don't know what to do with that. I don't know what to do with that. Um I don't see how people are gonna be, you know, screaming and celebrating. But now that they got this piped in fucking audio, they could have the crowd do whatever they want. And lastly, that Undertaker um farewell was terrible. I don't know why you call all them people in the ring and then took them out the ring to put Vince in the ring and had Undertaker come. And he kneeled and he said, like, uh, two sentences and left. Why? Why did you do that? Why? I, I don't, I don't, and why, why did it happen the way it happened? I don't even know why. It was completely disjointed. I didn't enjoy it. But, you know, farewell to the take. I did get to see him in 2018 when they had that feud going into Super Showdown or some shit like that. So, at least I got to experience the long arduous walk of the undertaker and yes it's super loud and it looks really cool live i'll tell you that but you know it is what it is so i guess i'm gonna leave that right here because there's nothing else roman and roman and drew were just absolute titans in the ring you know it started out real slow but the beefcake picked up and they were slamming them bodies and Roman took his shirt off, you know, he don't have his shirt on no more, and they need to update his cartoon or whatever hologram that shit is, that needs to have his shirt off too. That's all I got. Tell me what y'all think in the comments about Lana, if you want to say what you think about the Survivor Series, what the, WWE is scripted. Why is shit happening the way it's happening as if they don't got no control over shit? That's what I want to know. It's scripted. Y'all, it's fake. Y'all literally scripting. The thing, what's not fake is the wrestling. But the show's fake. So why is it going this way? As if y'all ain't got no control over shit. Let me know. Alright, I'm gonna leave it there. Hit your girl up. Later!